I think it is now time for questions uh, from the audience. Um, I think um, there's going to be, we shall need at least one of the translators to come up and translate, at least for Mr. Choi, uh, maybe both uh, the... Uh, they want to do it from the table, so they Oh, oh, they do it from the table, okay. Um, fine. Uh, while you are thinking of questions, I, I have one that I know I want to ask my colleague, uh, Mark Noland, and that is, he said that the uh, uh, refugees mainly came from the wavering, what he described as the wavering class, and I would have assumed that they mostly would have come from the hostile class, assuming that the classes are roughly uh, divided equally, um, between, you know, that everybody isn't in the wavering class, as it were. Um, is there any explanation of that? Uh, what, what, uh, uh, to what do you attribute this uh, rather counterintuitive debate then? And if the other two speakers want to answer as well, that would be fine. Do you want to translate all the questions? No. Uh, <laughs> well, that was what I thought would be the advantage. Um, can, you get, can you give a brief uh, summary of the question in Korea? Yes? Yeah. yes. Uh, next time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next time. Yeah. I didn't know how to put on the um, well, uh, you, uh, I'm sorry. Can you rephrase that uh, a little bit? The, the question was: um, most of the people in our survey uh, come from the wavering class, and John's question was: um, he would have thought most of them would have come from the hostile class, or at least that the hostile class would be overrepresented in our sample. So the question is: why is that not the case? But why do why do we have relatively few people from the hostile class and relatively a lot from the way we're in class? Where Medium, medium class is considered as a wavering class. So that's what he just uh, you know, rephrased in Korean. 적대 계층인 경우에는 감시와 통제가 동료 계층에 비해서 더 훨씬 강화되어 있습니다. The hostile class uh, against the hostile class, uh, there is a greater supervision and surveillance. So uh, the, I think he's pointing out that. It is more difficult to escape for the hostile class people. 그러나 동료 계층인 경우에는 좀 감시와 이런 대상 통제가 느슨해져 있는 상황입니다. The surveillance is a looser for the wavering class. 따라서 북한을 탈북하는 어떤 그 환기 조건이 이 적대 계층에 비해서 더 좋다고 볼수 있습니다. So conditions are more favorable for the wavering people to get out of North Korea. Thank you. I would just say that, I mean, it's a good question that occurred to me as well when I looked at these results. Uh, one issue is we don't know today what the precise breakdown is among these three classes. So we don't know the degree to which um, the wavering classes are overrepresented. They're not one-third, one-third, one-third in, in reality. And then, having said that we don't know what the underlying sample is, um, then you have Mr. Choi's response, which is that the hostile class will be uh, put in locations and subject to greater surveillance and probably simply have a more difficult time uh, making this, uh, this uh, journey. Thank you. 
Uh, I see two questions in the front um, and one in the back. I want to ask you to go to a microphone and uh, start off by telling us who you are and uh, where you come from uh, and then uh, present your question um, if you find. Thank you very much. I'm Paul Chamberlain and I'm a career watcher. I have actually questions for each panelist. May I just do these all at once? For Ambassador Che, I just want to be sure that I understand it is the position of the Indian Bach government that the dire situation of North Korean human rights should not be ignored or silenced. And that's for Colonel, uh, Ambassador Che. For Colonel Che, I have four questions, but they're short, and I think the answers are short. What is the mission for an early warning unit in the forward divisions? How, the second question is, how sincerely do North Koreans fear an attack by the United States or the U.S. ROK alliance? And perhaps in converse, how sincerely do North Koreans envision achieving the military unification of Korea? And the fourth question is, how many informers are there among, say, a hundred North Koreans? And for Mark, going to the policy recommendation, which is to get people out of North Korea, I understand, but I don't know for sure. I understand that the United States, through the North Korea Freedom Act, opened the United States to receive North Korean refugees. And that was in September of 2004, if my memory is correct. And to date, only 17 North Korean defectors have been allowed into the United States. If that's true, why is that? And should the policy recommendation be ex ex expanded to, to name the United States as a destination? for qualified North Korean refugees, which is to say, those who are determined are not agents or spies. Thank you. I think Mr. Chamberlain gets an advantage in being an early questioner in that he asked uh, six questions. But in future, if people are going to restrict themselves to just one question, it will allow more people to ask questions. Um, but, but Colonel Choi, uh, uh, sorry, I'm asking the chair first. Uh, okay. Can I uh, verify what your questions were before, before I translate to the For Ambassador Che is the, is the Indian Bach administration position that North Korean human rights should not be ignored or silenced. Okay, I, I understood that. So uh, the next question was uh, for, for Mr. Choi about uh, what, what is the mission of uh, only one is only one is only one is the third question was uh, how fearful North Koreans are uh, against the uh, possible U.S. attack against the North Korea. I cannot hear. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the, how, how, the second question was uh, what is the mission of uh, early warning units? The third question was uh, how fearful how fearful North Korean people are against. Uh, possible U.S. attack against North Korea. That was the third question. Fourth question was about the unification. That's also for Mr. Choi. What, what, what was the... How sincerely does North Korea envision achieving military unification? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay. for Mr. J. Mr. Chair, uh, the question was, uh, uh, the question was, 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 uh, uh, 
Uh, I would like to speak in Korean, for uh, instance, in expression, if you don't mind. Uh, 이명박 정부의 그 인권 개선의 의지는 그, 좀 매우 강하다고 생각합니다. 우리 uh, 같은 uh, 동포의 그, 인북한 권의 참사에 대해서 uh, 그동안 uh, 외면해 왔는데, 지난 10년간 선수로 하듯이 하면서 북한 주민의 인권이 더 악화됐다. 라고 하는 그런 평가가 있고, 에, 또 그것을 우리 여기 데이비드 호크 선생님도 얼마 전에 서울 세미나에서 그런 식으로 하셨죠. 이 리명박 administration's uh, human rights improvement uh, efforts are, may, uh, are very uh, strong. Um, it's based on uh, brotherhood and love. Um, unfortunately, uh, the 10 years of the Sunshine Policy made this worse. But the Sunshine Policy has a very large scale of the Sunshine Policy. There is also a large scale of the Sunshine Policy, and a large scale of the Sunshine Policy. And the Sunshine Policy has a large scale of the Sunshine Policy, and a large scale of the uh, the problem or the issue of human rights uh, in North Korea is very uh, broad. Uh, it includes the North Korean defectors issues, uh, the dispersed family issues between North and South Korea, and many others. Uh, 예, 국제사회가 북한에 대해서 압박을 가하는 방법, 유엔총회 결의라든가 국제시민사회가 나서는 이런 방법이 예, 주요하고 효과적일 수 있습니다. 예, 좀더 우리가 그 실효적이 효과적일 수 있습니다. So, uh, an effective way to um, resolve the North Korean human rights issues, uh, especially the North Korean defectors uh, problem, is through international uh, community uh, uh, coming together uh, to uh, uh, resolve this problem and with the UN General Assembly also um, in this uh, issue all together. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Colonel Chow? My question is what is the question? The 사단에서 하든지 조기 경보 그거 하는 군대들의 목적이 뭐냐고요? 네? 그것도 설명해달래. 조기 경보 부대가 그 조기 경보 부대? 네. 조기 경보 부대의 어, 의무가 아 경보 부대. 경보 부대. 경보 부대. 저기요. 조기. 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 조기 경보. 경보. 조기 경보 부대. 저기요. 조기. 경보 부대. 아 경보 부대는 이해를 잘 못하시는 것 같은데 그 이제 선배들. 그리고 아까 또 하나 더 보충하겠습니다. 그러니까 이제 적대계층하고 이제 동료계층, 적대계층이 왜그 탈북하기 어려운가 하는 것은 적대계층이 절대 다수가 정치범 수용사 아니면 감옥이 많이 갇혀 있습니다. 네. 아, 아까 또 보충하나. I would like to supplement a additional answer about wavering and hostile class. The reason for hostile class. Uh, People are unable to escape. Is they are already in the gulags. 이자 질문하신 그 의도가 조기 경보 부대인지 제가 여기에서 이제 발표한 어떤 경보병 부대를 의미하는 건지 이게 우리가 북한에는 조기 경보 부대라는 그런 부대는 없습니다. 경보병 경보병 부대 특전사 경보병 부대. 미리 경보하는 거 있잖아요. 경보. 네. 아 시스템. 무언이. 네. 조기 경보 세계 뭐 전쟁이 어떤 그 일어날 수 있다. 뭐 조기 이제 침공해 올수 있다. 그런 걸 이제 알리는 뭐 조기 경보 부대라는 부대는 존재하지 않습니다. 전쟁하지 않고 그건 군 모든 사범에서 아, 그러면은 아까 얘기하신 경보병 부대 
He's saying that we are having some uh, linguistic problem. Uh, he, what, what he meant with a uh, 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 그걸 조기 경보 시스템이라고 합니다. 조기 경보 시스템. 아, 조기 경보. 그런, 그런 부대는 없고. 그런 부대는 없고, 매 부대마다 공군이면 공군, 뭐 해군이면 해군, 뭐 육군이면 육군, 그 부대 사모부에서 그런 걸 이제 포착해가지고, 자, 최종적으로 이제 그 최고 사령까지 보고돼가지고, 최종 최고 사령관이, 아, 이게 전쟁을 지금 공격해야 오고, Okay, he has uh, finally said, I have finally understood that there is uh, no such unit for early warning. There is an early warning system that is uh, assigned with the various units. That's, that's what he said. Can I, uh, I will ask him for the third question. Paul, 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 this is a really obscure topic. You speak Korean, you can take it up in the hallway afterwards. We need to move on. Okay, okay and the question to me. Uh, I'm not sure the fact of 17 is correct. My understanding is close to 100, but the basic point is, is taken. I mean, if it were 200, it's still a small number. Um, my impression is that the State Department has, especially in the early years, was not exactly enthusiastic in its implementation of the law, was not particularly user-friendly to Korean-American families, which had uh, people who would have been eligible for uh, applying to come here, that uh, ongoing congressional oversight uh, is probably a necessary component to make sure that implementation uh, remains robust in the future. The basic issue is China, despite its membership as on the executive committee of the UN uh, Commission, uh, High Commissioner for Refugees, is uh, utterly derelict in its duty in not allowing UNHCR to do these interviews in, in China. So, uh, I mean, the first thing is you've got to basically, I think, name and shame China into trying to uh, uh, actually uphold its own responsibilities. I mean, the idea that they're on the executive committee of this organization and don't uphold the basic uh, responsibilities is, uh, is really uh, quite astounding. Um, in the longer term, I have argued that what we should do is the Chinese have concerns that the influx of North Koreans will upset the ethnic balance in their uh, border provinces. I think those are, concerns are probably overblown. Uh, Jilin province has a population of roughly 70 million. You could basically move most of North Korea into Jilin province and it wouldn't have a titanic impact on Chinese political economy. Nevertheless, they have these concerns and it seems to me that the appropriate response is to offer either via the UN or some coalition of the willing uh, to, to fund and operate temporary refugee resettlement camps on Chinese soil. So that you know, China lets them in and will take them off their hands, and then it becomes an issue of how many go to South Korea, how many go to the United States and other places. Okay, let's have a question from the back now. Yeah, Marcus, uh, uh, Jack Randler from Amnesty International. Marcus, forgive me if you covered this before I came in, but um, on uh, March 19th, the, the NGO partnership uh, issued a press release uh, talking about the cessation of their food aid program in North Korea. Um, could you uh, just say what the state of food aid is in North Korea right now, how much is going on, and what you would expect to have happen in the near future? Um, North Korea uh, experienced real shortages last year. Um, the 
and, and my guess is that there were some um, uh, hunger-related deaths of um, an unknown but probably relatively small magnitude. The most recent harvest was, a, by most observers' accounts, a modest improvement over a low base, so that uh, at least domestic production seems to have risen a bit. One of the responses last year was apparently the release of military stocks. And so um, it is uh, quite, uh, it could be easily anticipated, and indeed it appears to be the case, that the military is actually trying to grab back some of this harvest to replenish its stocks. So the amount of food available from domestic production for the local population is probably not as increased as the raw harvest numbers would suggest. As a consequence, North Korea still needs food from the outside, either in the terms of concessional aid or in uh, form of commercial imports. Um, the aid program basically has broken down. Uh, the United States negotiated an agreement uh, with North Korea back in May of last year that called for up to 400,000 metric tons to be delivered through the World Food Program, another 100 through this consortium of U.S. NGOs. My impression is that the U.S. NGOs did a pretty good job working with the North Koreans. Uh, conditions were better in terms of access and monitoring than they had experienced in the past. Um, and most, if not all, of the food that was supposed to go through that channel went through it. The problem was the WFP. Uh, it appears that for whatever reason, and I've heard differing accounts, and I'm not an, I'm not an insider to these uh, negotiations, that the WFP uh, was either unwilling or unable to implement the protocol, and as a consequence, the U.S. government was unwilling to contribute to it. Uh, they got very little response from other donors other than the United States. So basically, the WFP got nowhere near uh, 400,000 metric tons. Uh, now, with the recent uh, foreign policy provocations, the U.S. NGOs have, in essence, been expelled. Uh, WFP has some kind of skeleton crew there, but they're not actually moving through food through the system. Uh, North Korea appeared to go on a buying binge in terms of commercial imports. Uh, in the period immediately before the missile test, quite possibly in anticipation of uh, the political fallout from that test. If they go through with their threats today of more missile and nuclear tests, I think the situation will get even worse. So I think that if you're an average North Korean resident, um, the situation today is improved relative to the situation, say, six months ago or a year ago, uh, but the next uh, year may actually be very tough. I think it's true, is it not, Mark, that uh, WFP uh, suffered other calls on its uh, uh, la last year, um, and that may be partly t uh, responsible for the shortfall that you describe. But anyway, uh, let's take the next question. Yeah. Robert Rich, a retired American diplomat. This is for Dr. Nolan. Uh, Marcus, from your surveys of uh, people coming out of North Korea or from other sources that you have been looking at. Can you make any uh, judgments about the degree to which before their departure from North Korea, uh, these folks had in much knowledge about what was happening in the South or uh, has, and has that been changing to any degree over recent years? Uh, that's a really good question. I, would, I, I thought that Bob was going to introduce himself not only as a very uh, esteemed and uh, 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 highly regarded former American diplomat, but also the editor of uh, Avoiding the Apocalypse, a book for which I won an award that was surely due to his good editing <laughs> of my writing. Um, what is remarkable when you talk to these people is the almost entire lack of knowledge about the outside world uh, on which they made this fundamental decision to leave the country. Uh, the vast majority of them, uh, how, they, how they reached that decision was almost entirely by word of mouth descriptions of both how difficult it would be to exit the country and then what they would find once they got out. 
Another thing that's really remarkable is um, how many of them say that, that this migration decision was essentially a two-part decision. First, they made a decision to leave uh, North Korea and go to China because they heard that China was better. Then, once they were in the relatively free uh, social and political environment of China, they learned that things were a whole lot better in South Korea than they had been led to believe. So then they made a second decision to leave China to head to South Korea. That said, one of the things we asked them in the survey was access to media. And it is quite clear that the consumption of foreign media is rising that the basic informational walls are breaking down. And indeed, we have a number of journalists here today who have participated in that process of uh, breaking down those informational barriers. Uh, yes, there's one there. Um, if people want to ha uh, line up behind the microphones as well, that's fine. Yeah, but first, first here. Um, uh, my name is Yangwon Kiyo. Uh, visiting Georgetown University. I have a question to Marcus uh, Nolan. Uh, one of the uh, PowerPoint presentation that you displayed and uh, attracted my attention, which is uh, economy, economy reform in North Korea that you uh, have written a book about that. And grassroots marketization and the policy ineffectiveness now that leads me to the following question, that somehow uh, economic reform uh, introduced in North Korea 2002, which uh, more or less the uh, leadership uh, changed its mind a few years later. Now, uh, in terms of what China did in, in economic uh, reform, the Deng Xiaoping on, which uh, is kind of a successful case, but the reason why North Korea failed, it seems to me, is, uh, uh, let's say, there's no Deng Xiaoping-like figure on, on top. Uh, my question to you, uh, in light of what we hear about uh, what's happening in North Korea, is that, is a Chang Song Tech, perhaps, will turn into a Deng Xiaoping-like figure for North Korea, that's not immediately, but down the road. In that case, I think that the marketization from the top and from the bottom may uh, work out something for the better uh, you know, future of North Korea. I'd like to hear your opinion or speculation as to what may uh, or may not happen in North Korea in the next few years. Um, as in most, th most things with North Korea, there are both positive and negative signs. I would say that the, the general trend since 2005 has been negative, away from reform, increasing emphasis on control. That's not uniformly the case. The Eroscom investments in the telecom sector could be pointed at as a positive sign. I think that people often make a kind of loose, uh, invoke a kind of loose comparison to China, which, which you did not do, but I, it's something I often hear. Uh, there are really some fundamental differences. Um, in China and also in Vietnam, when they started their reforms, more than 70% of the labor force were in the agricultural sector. It was basically an agriculturally driven reform, which for reasons in the interest of time I won't go into, was likely to be what economists call Pareto improving. That is, everybody was made better off. Um, the, path, the reform pathway for a more industrialized economy is more difficult. And in terms of economic composition, North Korea really looks more like Belarus or Romania than it does uh, China or uh, Vietnam at the time they initiated their reforms. Now it may be that the, the, the working class of those industrial cities on the, on the uh, East Coast is simply so beaten down that they would not object to any sorts of change because almost anything would be an improvement. Nevertheless, it's a different set of political and economic dynamics. It's also the case that China and Vietnam really didn't have to deal with a divided country phenomenon. Vietnam's the most obvious case, they had a civil war. One side won. One side became the monopolist definers of what it meant to be Vietnamese and what they were going to do. Uh, North Korea is clearly the junior partner on the peninsula, both in terms of size and accomplishment. And as you begin to reform, you could call in the basic, the basic uh, raison d'etre of the regime. 
So whether uh, Chang Sung Tech is going to turn out to be the dung of uh, the uh, dung of uh, China or uh, of North Korea, or just uh, another kind of uh, continuation of the status quo, or the uh, Alexander Kerensky or Lothar de Mazier or Abu Hassan Bami Sadr of North Korea, uh, I, I'm not sure. But there's a little monograph, it's about 100 pages long, um, for sale out front, in which I discuss precisely these questions of political transition and, 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 and where North Korea could end up once it both has to deal with reforms and these uh, generational transitions in leadership as well. Yes. Hi, uh, Joshua Lives from Radio Free Asia. Uh, Marcus, I was just sort of wondering, you mentioned that uh, many of the people that you uh, were able to interview tend to be of prime age. Um, can you talk a little bit about the youth defectors that you've spoken with? You know, what, it, what kind of trauma have they experienced? What are what is the impetus really for their movement out of North Korea if, if it tends to be different than the prime age defectors? The, the youth, the, the the younger, well rather yeah. Okay, so basically there there were a, a, some number of people in the sample which were not used in the statistical analysis, but we talked to who were really youth and who were really de family dependents. So you had people who were 13 years old or 14 years old or something, and basically they just followed their families out. You have another phenomenon of young people leaving, and that's basically because there's no future. There's absolutely no future in those villages in Northeast North Korea. And so you're getting responses now with increasing use of the, the cell phone network, the Chinese cell phone network, not the North Korean one, but the Chinese one that can be operated in the regions very close to the border, Descriptions of villages that have just been completely depopulated of young people um, because they have no future and they're not heading towards Pyongyang. They're not heading south to find a future. They're heading north into China. Okay, um, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, my name is Myung-Hwa Jane from Radio Free Asia. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Che Chu Hai and because uh, he cannot speak English, I will use both Korean and uh, English. Che Chu Hai will ask you a question. 어 아까 저 증언하실 때 1997년 DC 방문하셔서 어, 북한에 한 개의 내지 두 개의 핵무기를 보유하고 있고 가까운 기간에 탄도 미사일을 어, 개발할 것이다 이렇게 증언하셨는데 그 결과적으로 그게 맞게 돼서 당시에 일부 회의적인 태도에 대해서 이제 어, 좀 자랑스럽게 생각하시는 것 같은데요. 어, 오늘 아침 뉴스를 보면은 그쪽이 일본 쪽에서 나온 뉴스인데요. 어, 정말 이번 여름에 어, 북한이 어, 핵무기를 아니까. 그러니까 핵무기 발사할 것이다 이런 그 보도가 나오고 있는데 어, 보시, 본인이 보시기에 어, 그렇게 할것 같은지 가능성이 매우 높은지 아니면 그냥 이렇게 위협적인 발언을 하는 건지 그게 이제 궁금해서 제가 질문을 드립니다. Um, uh, Mr. Chejuha, you said that uh, during your uh, 1997 uh, visit to DC, you testified that North Korea uh, had one or two nuclear weapons, and uh, in the near future. They are going to uh, test uh, uh, ballistic missiles soon. And at the time, some expressed their doubts about your testimony, but 20, 12 years later, uh, you said you were right. And uh, today's, uh, according to today's uh, news reports from Japan, uh, some experts say that uh, North Korea is expected to test another nuclear weapon in the summer. And do you think it's likely or? You know, it's just a threatening remarks or a very high, highly likely scenario. Um, these are my questions, and uh, because I'm bilingual, I want to provide two clarifications. Uh, Mr. Che uh, said that it's not early uh, warning system; it's light foot unit, 경보대, and and also the number. Because I'm covering the uh, State Department uh, from time to time, the exact number of North Korean refugees who are settled in the United States is um, 75 or 76 at this time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 어, 제 생각에는 이제 북한이 전번에 이제 실험한 핵실험은 지하 핵실험이었습니다. 2000년 6월 이제 2006년에 실험한 The 2006 uh, nuclear test was an underground nuclear test. 
북한은 뭐 지하 핵실험 뿐만 아니라 또 지상에서의 핵실험 이런 계획도 프로그램을 가지고 있을 것으로 저는 생각합니다. I understand that North Korea is also capable of above ground nuclear test. 그런 의미에서 어떤 공해상이나 해상된 일정한 지역에 지상 이제서 이제 사용할 핵탄두에 대한 그 위력을 이제 실험하고 검사하고 시위하기 위한 그런 발사를 이제 할 가능성도 저는 배제하지 않고 있습니다. I I cannot uh... Eliminate the possibility that North Korea is trying to experiment nuclear test using sea or above ground capability. 이번에 이런 것은 조금 이제 어떤 진짜 이제 실험 하겠다는 것보다도 그 압박성이 이제 있는 시성이 그런 것도 이제 농화다 보입니다. I believe there is more to the way of. Uh, pressuring the United States rather than actually actual possibility of uh, testing. 미국이 북한을 핵 보유로 인정하지 않고 이번 발사한 탄도 미사일과 관련한 유엔 안정 보장 회의 이제 뭐 지난 1718호 결의와 또 이번 이제 성명에 따르는 북한에 대한 강력한 이제 뭐 정책 압박과 경제 군사적 제재를 가할 경우에는 북한이 그에 대한 이제 어떤 뭐 막서는 그런 것으로서 그때 가서 핵 실험을 할 수도 있다고 보아집니다. I believe more in the belief that North Korea is more likely to carry out the test, such a nuclear test. Although right now it is. The pressure tactics, but based on the UN actions, how the United Nations act against the last missile test of early April, if the the pressure, international pressure, gets much stronger, then I believe the North Korea might actually resort to the real test. 제일 중요한 변수는 중국과 러시아입니다. The most important thing is China and Russia. 지금 중국과 러시아는 겉으로는 북한이 어떤 뭐 미사일 핵실험이나 미사일 그런데 이제 반대하는 의견을 이제 그 하는 것 같지만 속으로는 그걸 묵인하는 그런 어떤 입장을 정한 것으로 알고 있습니다. The problem is that both China and Russia act like they don't want North Korea's nuclear program, North Korea's nuclear military advancement, but actually. China and both China and Russia are letting it go. Muginada. Basically, recognizing and I think the best way is letting it go. Accepting, accepting what North Korea is doing. 때문에 미국이 대북 정책에서 가장 중요한 게 선행해야 될 것이 중국과 러시아와의 확실한 협력과 공조입니다. 그것이 진행되지 않고는 북한이 핵실험이나 탄도미사일 발사를 저지시킬 수 없습니다. So the most important thing is for the United States to deal with China and Russia properly to pressure North Korea against. You know, further actions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, I'm from Seattle, Washington. I came from Seattle, Washington. Ah, uh, 그리고 저는 한미 자유 수호 연합의 회장을 맡고 있습니다. I'm a president of a, a Korean American Freedom Alliance. Ah, uh, 한국말로 하겠습니다. 그래서 통역 부탁을 드리겠습니다. 먼저 최대령님께 질문하겠습니다. 1994년에 클린턴 정부와 한반도 비핵화 협정을 맺고서 아까 최대령께서 말씀하신 바와 같이 미국과 한국 정부의 막대한 원조로서 지금 핵 개발을 하고 또 탄도 미사일 
장거리 미사일을 지금 두 번씩이나 아, 쏘아 올리고 이런 실정이 있습니다. 아, 핵 개발을 해서 지금 아까도 말씀하신 바와 같이 에, 어, 핵탄두를 어, 이제 시, 어, 쏘겠다는 그런 어, 얘기가 나오고 있는데 지금 이 시점에서 어, 어, 최대령뿐 아니라 여기 앉아 계신 여러분 모든 분들에게 질문을 하겠습니다. 2012년 12년에 한미 연합사가 해체되게 되어 있습니다. 노무현 정권 때 에, 한국과 미국 정부가 합의를 해서 2012년에는 어, 해체가 되면 어, 미군이 한국에 있을 필요성이 없어집니다. 어, 미군이 주도권이 없기 때문에 자동적으로 미군이 철수하게 됩니다. 그러면 은 어, 북한의 김정일이가 어, 또한 지금 10년 동안의 햇볕 정책으로 많이 한국, 어, 한국 사회가 좌경화가 되어 있고 어, 어, 그렇기 때문에 에, 쉽게 조카 통일될 가능성이 많습니다. 그래서 여기에 대해서 어떻게 생각하시는지 한미연합사 해체를 우리가 반대해서 조지를 해야 될 것인지 그냥 하도록 내버려 둬야 될 것인지 그것을 한번 질문하겠습니다. 그리고 두 번째로 최 대사님께 질문하겠습니다. 어, 어, 햇볕 정책으로 10년 동안에 김대중과 노무현 정권이 어, 북한 정권에 에, 정확하게 얼마를 어, 원조 해줬는지 얼마를 갖다 줬는지 그거를 좀 알, 어, 아시면 발표해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. So, could you give us an interpretation in English and bring your remarks to close? Okay. 통영해 주시겠어요? 네. 첫째 질문만. The, the first question was uh, the U.S. or Korea command will be abolished uh, in 2012. After that, uh, there won't be any reason for the U.S. forces to stay in Korea. The question is uh, for uh, Colonel uh, Che. What he thinks about uh, that possibility? Uh, for example, if South Korea does not have uh, U.S. forces, what will happen? Uh, the question for uh, Ambassador uh, Che is, uh, uh, for the last uh, 10 years, uh, President uh, Kim Dae-jung and Mo uh, Moon, they gave uh, lots of, lots of uh, uh, aid to North Korea. Do you have uh, any data about how much they gave to North Korea? Thank you. So the, the first question is for Chongun Chae. Chae Deesa님께. Yes, yes, uh, uh, that's fine. Okay. Yes, uh, Second sure, question. Sure. No, no, uh, the one question per person. Okay. If I'm the expert. 제가 이제 뭐 햇볕 정책, 포용 정책 하면서 북한이 이제 얼마 많은 돈이 들어갔다는 정확한 액수를 잘 모르니까 아마 이제 대사님께서 그런 걸잘 알까? 그 질문을 그분을 위해서 했는데. 아 그래. 네. 좀 이따. 네. 저한테 뭘 질문했어요? 아그 질문한 건 뭐냐면은 2000, 2012년. 네. 2012년에 네. 연합 연합 사령부가 해체됐는데. 네. 아 그러면은 비분이 아, 남한에 있을 필요가 없어졌는데 그런 거는 북한의 기억이. 네, 그 제가 답변을 하네. 글쎄, 그게 전작권이 이전되면 주한미군이 철수하는 걸 대인지 그 관계는 제가 잘 모르겠습니다. 만약 철수한다면 대한민국 안보에는 엄청난 공백이 생깁니다. He's not sure whether U.S. forces will withdraw at that point. But if that happens, uh, it will be dangerous uh, vacuum in South Korea. 그렇게 되면 그때 가서 북한이 남한 대한민국 정부와 국민을 핵과 미사일로 이제 협박 공갈할 겁니다. Uh, at, in that case, uh, North Korea will uh, will have uh, uh, will threat uh, South Korea with uh, threats of. Uh, 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 nuclear uh, uh, 
그렇게 되면 이제 뭐 김대중 노무현 정권 때처럼 북한이 하자는 대로 끌려 다니게 될 것이고 결과적으로는 북한이 바라는 어떤 적화 통일이 실현에 엄청난 아주 한, 그 좋은 환경이 이제 마련될 것이라고 생각합니다. Okay, uh, in, that, in that case, uh, just like uh, it's more than uh, Kim Dae-jung and No Mo-yeon era, at that point, uh, because of the threat, uh, South Korea will be uh, dragged, uh, you know, manipulated by North Korea more than uh, it happened uh, during uh, Kim and the Roe era. Uh, therefore, the situation will be ripe for North Korea's uh, uh, Unifying South Korea with, with the communism. Uh, it will be just like uh, Shilla's king uh, bowed to Korea. 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 아, 그래서 지금 어, 한국에서 no, 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 no. Thank you. 아, I think uh, uh, Kim Dae-jung and Dong Myung administration gave about uh, 12 billion dollars to North Korea as a form of uh, humanitarian assistance exchange, economic exchanges and cooperation. Uh, government level about uh, 5 billion dollars and non-governmental uh, uh, dimensions uh, 7 billion dollars uh, I presume.